Hello, everybody. Today we're back in the new Universe Sandbox graphics update. And we're gonna be messing around, trying some new stuff that you guys suggested. Hi, who did the TTS? We're gonna be trying some new stuff. Should be pretty fun. Let's get into it. This is the new update that we're running. I made a video on it in the past, but we're back. If you have Universe Sandbox and you wanna try this preview update that I'm working on, go to Steam, right click on Universe Sandbox, go to Properties, Betas, and then go on beta participation, make sure it says put it on preview version, and then it'll download this update even though it's not all the way out yet. You can still have access to it. One thing I really wanna try, guys, I wanna see what happens when we collide a star and a black hole. A black hole just absorbs. Yeah, that's what it did in the past. I wanted to see if anything was different. One million solar mass black hole versus the sun. Okay, did I already eat it? We need a bigger star, bring back Beetlejuice. Here we go, Beetlejuice versus a 1 million solar mass black hole. I believe it's just gonna disappear, but we'll see. Oh, okay, it is kind of pulling mass off. It just disappears. Unfortunately, I wish I wish it like ripped it apart. That'd be so cool. You should see if Beetlejuice would supernova against Stevenson 2 to 18. That's a good idea. Beetlejuice versus Stevenson 218. Stevenson 218 is bigger. Largest star that we know of, I believe still, versus how big is Beetlejuice compared to it? That's I was like that's the same. Beetlejuice versus Stevenson 18. Prediction is do they both die? Yes or no? I think they both supernova or die or explode. I don't think either will survive. Okay. Not supernova. It was kind of split, but remember the sun caused Beetlejuice to die. They both die. Bro, where does it go? I think this carries the mass. Yeah, look, this one fragment, this one cloud fragment has 30% the mass of the sun in it. So all the mass is still here. Just like, I don't know, dust clouds spread out. Astrophysicists uh, in chat, would that happen IRL? It's cold, is it? It is cold, which is weird, because where would all the heat go? I don't know how realistic that is. All right, um, next, I want to try to simulate ring formation. So first right now, I'm gonna try to put the moon really close to Earth, because if the moon gets close enough, the Roche limit will be hit. So gravity will be so strong that it rips apart the moon. And this is how rings get made. So we'll see what happens on here. I wanna see with the new update, how this looks. Okay, is this close enough for the Roche limit? Might need to be a little closer. Here, that's gotta break, yep. So here's what I wanted to see is this ring stuff. So that was just the moon, got shredded apart. We'll see if it turns into a ring. Kind of. What does this look like without our space goggles? Oh, that kind of looks cooler. Very, very bright. But this is no protection on your eyes. So I don't think you're blind. The rapture is happening. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this wouldn't be good. How is this affecting Earth? Life likelihood? It dropped. It's usually about 90, 95, 96 maybe. It is kind of like a ring. Like, would you say that's a ring? In reality, what would happen is all the ones moving down would eventually collide with the ones moving up and stuff, and it would eventually flatten out. That's how. That's why rings are so flat. Uh, I don't think Universe Sandbox can simulate that, though. So after a long enough time, ah! what? Okay, it's because our space goggles are off. What just happened? Wait, what did just happen? Okay, it just. Somehow got to 6,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is probably the part where I should say, we are on a preview version of the game. So I don't think everything's working as intended. <laughs> it looks like that one planet in Destiny, right? The, oh, the big, the big ball. What's it called? The Traveler? Yeah, it does look like that. Good job. <laughs> so the rings kind of worked though. They actually worked better than I thought. Like that looks like a ring system. I think Earth exploding and heating up like that was a bug, but that that's a ringed planet. It just happened again. I wonder if it's one rock collides with Earth and something's wrong with the physics engine or something in the game and it makes it think it exploded or something. Uh, so yeah, it worked. Rings got made. All right, uh, next. Oh, I wanna try this. If you saw the last video, we made a lava planet. Oh, there we go. Okay, that looks really cool. 
Yes. That is so cool. But I want to make a lava planet and then change the color of the lava in the game settings and then put a moon and see if it like glows, you know, like and can reflect off the moon. Uh, we'll use the sun. So not too far from the sun, probably here. Here's our planet. It's already heating up. It might be close enough to just start having lava on it already. Yeah. But can we change the color? Light color. Oh, is this new? I think this is new. Maybe? Blue? That's not changing it. If you see simulated, that's the same color that it's glowing. My guess is it's not in the preview update yet, which makes me sad. I wanted to have it emit other colors of light. That would have been cool. Okay, next we're gonna try a brown dwarf. Someone a while ago said turn Jupiter, make Jupiter bigger. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. Because previously brown dwarves, they would like kind of glow orange, but the light didn't actually emit. So you couldn't like put planets and have them be lit up by the brown dwarf. So this is realistic. There's no ambient light sources. So I think about 50 Jupiters turns it into a brown dwarf. Okay, see how it's heating up now? So a brown dwarf is basically an object that's between a gas giant and a star. It's like the smallest kind of star. So we just made Jupiter a lot bigger. It's 43 times. It still counts as a planet, not a star yet. This stopped heating up. We're gonna make it a little bigger. Okay, so there's the glowing that I was talking about. I'm gonna put a planet, like Pluto or something, here. No, Pluto's, sorry, Pluto's not a planet. We're gonna put a moon here, and then the prediction is whether the light will actually reflect off the surface. 95% of you think the light will hit the surface of the moon. Okay, let's put a moon in orbit. Okay, that was too close. Um, sorry. It just... <laughs> the whole thing is dead. We'll put it out here. That looks safe. And... Um... I think it's working? Yeah, that's... Those are clouds. So the clouds are being lit up. This gave me an idea, seeing all this stuff shoot out, because that looks really cool. I want to try to make an accretion disk on a black hole. It's like what, if you see an interstellar, the glowing ring around the black hole. Let's go Sagittarius A to get a supermassive black hole. There's a couple ways we could do it. I think throwing a star around it, kind of what we did with the, to make, give earth rings, instead of doing a planet and a moon, do a black hole and a star. Um, That's too big. Arcturus. Okay, that that's probably good. Put it close in orbit. Yeah, and then have it get ripped apart. That's all? That's all the fragments that came out? Okay, do some more then. Get ripped apart. I think in real life, the energy would be high enough that, oh, I caused a supernova, to keep it hot. I think the problem is probably that these aren't gonna stay hot. Um, we are getting supernovas. It is kind of working. Like you can see the vision. Look at it on the horizontal plane. It's not perfectly flat. Okay, why is this one still here? Okay, thanks. Cool down, maybe? They're just like fading out. Like, that's not exactly what I wanted. Okay, try two is gonna be add a ring in the game. What could we do? A moon swarm? I don't know. Okay, I think what's happening, we did the accretion disk decent. The problem was the supernovas are so bright that the camera is adjusting. So let me try again. Okay, Sagittarius A. Instead of using stars, let's use planets. Let's use Jupiters. Those are so small though. Executive decision, we're getting a smaller black hole. Only 10K solar masses instead of 10, how big Sagittarius A, like 43 million times or something? Thoughts? It works. To make it look cooler, if you have this bigger, it looks cooler, right? It works. Turn off goggles. Okay, no goggles. Flashbang. Okay, I made the mass or the radius bigger, but I didn't. Okay, I think it automatically changed the the mass. We'll see if this gets shredded. It is kind of cool to watch it pass through the back. 
like the black hole light bending is really cool. Oh, okay. Is that is that it? It's like very foggy now. It's kind of hard. If someone can get a better accretion disk, send me a, a thing on Discord. The one more thing I want to try is I want to try spinning stuff to death because we've done that and it shoots out a ton of particles, which is cool already. But with this new update, I think it will be really cool. Let's just go into the solar system and we're going to spin everything to death in the solar system. OK, we'll do the sun last because that would kill everything. Mercury. What did Mercury even do to you? Hey, we are not we're not planetist here. We're going to destroy all of them. And if you someone says I am planetist because of Pluto, Pluto is not a planet. So you're wrong. I'm going to put a planet like Pluto or something. There's a couple ways to spin it. You can either go into motion and turn down the rotational period, or you can use the force tool, which I like better because you can just pick a direction and start spinning it until it spins so fast that it rips itself apart. Oh, okay. No space goggles. It's yeah, you're you're blind. Keep going, keep going, keep spinning. I didn't I didn't tell you to stop spinning. You can see the rotational period here. As I spin it, it gets faster. But as I let go, it'll slow down by itself because the energy is dissipating when the, the stuff comes up. Okay, there is Mercury shredded down to its core, I guess. Can you shred the core? Yeah. <laughs> Venus actually spins the opposite direction of most planets. There goes Venus, Earth, Force. Yes, it does look cool. Yeah, I don't think it's doing very well for us. Rotational period in minutes. This happens to Earth if one day was shortened to only 71 minutes. So imagine that the Earth completely doing a 24 hour cycle like as we know it, but in just over an hour. That's how fast it would have to spin to destroy itself. I'm gonna spin the sun to death right now. Do any planet survive? Here we go, force tool. We're gonna start spinning the sun until something happens. Okay. Death. So this is uh, not good, but not nearly as catastrophic as a supernova would be. Looks like they're all gonna, okay. I don't know if that's the game being wrong, but Mars isn't heating up at all, which feels unrealistic. Venus is very hot, but we just spun it. But also it looks like maybe it heated up from that. Uh, so no, it didn't kill the planets. We'll, we'll keep it going, just make sure. Okay, yeah, all the planets shoot out into space, but it didn't, they didn't get destroyed. Interesting, I thought at least some of them would have gotten destroyed. And just for comparison, here's what happens if we just supernova the sun, which is kind of similar to what we just did. Like I thought it would do a lot more. See how the planets are disappearing? They're actually being completely obliterated. It looks like Uranus and Neptune do survive a supernova though. Anyway, that is the new update in Universe Sandbox. Let me know in the comments what more you want to see in this update. Thank you all for watching. This is this is the outro to the YouTube video. If you want to be here live, link in the description for the Twitch page. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.